What's going on everybody? Just wanted to show you a, or make a quick video to show you what I've been working on as I strive for, for perfection in this mobile HF setup. But you can see in that black box right there, I have since added, over the last couple of weeks I've been playing around with this, it's a common mode choke. And there it's uh, nine turns on three Mix 52 240 cores. Straight from the, uh, Oh, what's the silent key? A guy from uh, it's a real popular article about the chokes, but it does work. That's for sure. At least at the antenna feed point, it works. Um, and this is a new Icom AH730 tuner. Fantastic tuner. I'm going to do a review on that. Do not buy one until I do the review because there are some alternatives, I believe. Assuming you're willing to live with some of the stuff that the alternatives don't have which probably 99 percent of the people would be able to but anyway get back to the choke um, got that paper. yeah so that's what we're dealing with this is a common article from uh the guy's a silent key now but uh, his call sign was yeah steve hunt g3 txq but uh very popular uh he has some popular i guess we call them windings for different chokes for different uh bands and this chart in the back shows you you can pull this offline you got to make sure you get this this article though because a lot of the articles don't contain this particular chart because it's got a couple of unique windings i think it's were updated but the one i'm using right is this uh one that says nine turns on three ft240 52 mix uh, cores and that's exactly what's in that box i just showed in the back and you can see this line here this dark line is where basically the sweet spot of the choke and it's basically i don't know what from 11 megahertz on up to 25 and of course it's green you can't see it on this black and white but there's a green band right here and that's supposed to be you know well within uh the operable range of this choke which basically covers everything that i use i don't do anything basically uh 40 meters and below i don't even do 40 to be honest I can, but I just I just don't do it. But uh, of course, there's chokes for that too. You can wind, you know, what nine turns on what's that? Four cores. It's a lot of cores, but uh, you know, I'll put you in that range. You know, cover that. And I believe you can run these in series. In other words, you can make a choke like I showed in that box and make another one of these and just put them in a bigger box and just put them in series. I've, I've seen that would work. But uh, you know, you wind them like this. The one I have, this one shows what is that? Two cores. Can't tell. Yeah, it looks like two, but mine are three stacked in this fashion, mix 52s, and then this one is seven turns, and I'm doing nine. So you can picture it looking like this, except there's another turn here and another turn here. That would give you nine. So that's what I've been I've been working on, and I I've been playing with it for like I said for the past two or three weeks. Uh, this one choke. I'll make sure it works before I, I start. Uh, uh, endorsing it or whatever you want to call it but uh, I originally had it in yeah this box right here so I made a box like people usually do they put two SO239 panel style connectors at the end and that's fine if you're using it indoors but outdoors it's super hard to seal these uh connectors right here because you can't get the tape in there so I was like eh you know what I just started over from scratch and bought another box and put uh, cable glands in here. Let's see if I have them. Yeah. Like these. These are quarter inch Amazon Amazon cable glands. You've seen them. You know, these are quarter inch. Quarter inch seems to fit RG58 fine. And uh, the tape. This is another thing I'll be happy to endorse is a silicone tape from uh, Amazon also. This stuff is fantastic. It's not like the old self-amalgamizing tape where you had to put it on there and then you wrap it with electrical tape and in five years, it's like a, it's almost like a rock. You can't even take it off because I've been down that road, but this is fantastic. And when you, when you get it wrapped right, you know, you don't have to, this one's got electrical tape on it because this is before I figured out you don't need that at all, but you can see how well, how nicely it wraps. And it's a rubber type thing, and there's absolutely no way it's going to uh, to come off. Really nice product. 
So basically what I have is this box here with that, that toroid in here wrapped and it comes in here and behind this, behind this grommet right here is another one of these. So it's attached inside the fender in there. And then uh, it's attached through here with the SO239 barrel connector. And of course on this end here, this was already SO239 and this is just a crimp on PL259. But you can see when I was talking about the cable glands, no way water's getting in there at all. And of course this is a waterproof box. Now, and then I made it like an aluminum bracket for it to fit on. But one thing I didn't think about, and I was watching one of those antenna build videos, and K6ARK was talking about when those toroids heat up. Of course, that's not he wasn't talking about a common mode choke uh, toroid, but he was talking about one on an antenna. When they heat up, they start, you know, basically quote losing their mind because their intolerances and stuff start going haywire. Well. You know, with this thing mounted right there in the sun, am I going to experience that same problem? Now, it's probably not going to affect it in the way it would affect a, you know, trying to keep an antenna resonant. But, you know, is this is this choke going to lose its, you know, its range or whatever when it starts heating up in the Puerto Rican sun or the Texas sun or, you know, it's, it's hot in Puerto Rico. It's hot here, too. So I don't know. I guess it'll remain to be seen. I guess at that point, if it does, I'll just extend the wires and I'll mount it inside the fender. Uh, you know, I originally wanted to mount it up here, you know, get it as super close to the feed point as I could, but uh, it just didn't work out that way. Not this not this go around. If I ever build another one of these, I'll, I'll be sure and make a uh, dedicated spot for it. But that's it. I mean, it really lowered the noise floor uh, uh, by mounting it at the feed point. Like I said, I tried it up here, just, you know, at the radio, you know, just having it in this box and then, you know, run the antenna in here and this back to the radio and it did nothing. I mean, it didn't, I mean, I couldn't tell a difference at all. I used it like that for probably two weeks and I, I didn't notice any difference at all, but mounting it back here at the feed point for sure lowered the noise floor. No question about it. But, uh, that's it. That's all I want. I want to share, and I, like I said, I'm going to do a review on that tuner over there, and maybe give some alternatives later.